position here, and it forces Texas to bring the infield in. McGuire facing Steinhagen, who rips the first pitch foul over the roof on the right side. Nobody out here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. The White Frogs looking to extend their four-run lead here. And these are pretty big runs, even though TCU has a four-run lead. The way Texas has played in the late innings and how they've been able to rally. I wouldn't think Jim Schlossnagel's comfortable right now with just a four-run advantage. No, I wouldn't think so either. You don't want to leave anything to chance. You definitely want to get these two runs in off, off McGuire, who's from Oakton, Virginia, one of only three Longhorns that are not from the state of Texas. Seem to always have a couple kids from California and a couple other kids across the nation that want to come down to Austin and play. 1-1. One, one. Steinhagen takes it high. For Travis Duke, he goes two-thirds of an inning, gives up two hits, no runs, but he does leave with property on base. Dane Steinhagen, one for three, had a base hit. Earlier in the ballgame, back in the first. Last time up, hit the ball to center field as he drives this one down the right field line. If it's fair, it's trouble. It is a foul ball. And it wasn't foul by much. No, it was not. That was probably foul by maybe a baseball. And that was going to fall down. Steinhagen might end up on third base as we take a quick look at this. Boy, if that ball... Mm, man, yeah, I think that first base umpire Randy Bruns didn't see any chalk fly up, so I think that that kind of set off him calling that foul. I think it was probably the right call because if that one would have hit right on the line, some chalk would have flown up. Tough call for Brunt. That's why in postseason play, you have the extra two umpires down the line yeah. to have a little bit closer look at that. Hard for us to tell in slow motion. He's got to read it in real time. Swing and a miss. So after the Almost double. Steinhagen strikes out for the first out here in the bottom half of the eighth inning as we bring up Nolan Brown. That was a good pitch there by Guires. That slider started out over the middle of the plate and just broke down and away from Steinhagen. That's one of those as a hitter you have to basically read if it's not up to begin with. It's probably not going to be in the strike zone when it gets to home plate. Yeah. But you got a fraction of a second to make that decision. Brown takes the first pitch low and inside. Over at third base for the Horn Frogs, Connor Juan Hunnan. Brown 0 for 1, has a couple of sacrifice flies. He's driven into one of the five TCU runs here this afternoon. He's had some good productive at-bats today, looking for another one to fly ball, do it for him. Lays off a breaking ball, and he's ahead in the count now, 2-0. Oh. Cantu did a good job to keep that ball in front of him. Texas has a tough road ahead of them. They'll have a midweek game against Prairie View, then three against Texas Tech at home, Texas State, and then they'll finish out against Baylor. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday. Brown takes the strike. That series is going to be Saturday and Sunday, the week before the conference tournament, and they'll play a doubleheader on Sunday. So for both Texas and Baylor, that's going to be a tough assignment because you're going to have to use a lot of pitching and give them guys one day less rest than the rest of the league. Yeah, and, and Baylor could be in a spot to where they might have to either win two out of three or sweep a series just to get into the Big 12 tournament. Brown hits it on the ground, backhanded by Marlowe, who throws it wild to the plate. One on and scores. Here comes Scow. He scores. Brown ends up at second base on the play, and it's now 7-1. to one. That's the first error from Marlowe in a long, long time, and it proves to be costly as the Frogs add to their lead. Yeah, that was going to be a really tough play for Marlowe to make. 
probably seen him make that play before, but kind of throwing it off balance and trying to throw it into Cantu, but the throw was just a little bit too far to the left, and if Cantu were to try to get that ball, he would have ran right into Connor Wanahan and his... Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a really tough play. It's yeah. a tough play for Marlowe because his momentum's going away from where he's got to try and throw the ball, so he's throwing it over the pitcher's head and almost across his body. Yeah, it's a really tough play. You got to hurry in order to have any chance. Yeah, and it's a play that you probably don't practice a ton. And as a second baseman, you're used to throwing kind of, not necessarily sidearm, but with a little bit of run to your ball. And, you know, it's just a play that you don't get to practice a whole lot. And so, you know, if he would have made that play, it would have been spectacular. It was a good effort on his end. That's his first error in over would you say that earlier, 270 odd innings? Yeah, it's probably close to 277 innings at this point. 278 and two thirds innings, we're told, as his errorless streak goes by the boards. Barzilli's a hit in the count now, two balls and no strikes. Elliott with a long home run his last time up. Been on base three times. He's also singled and walked. Yeah, to put those innings into perspective, that's about 31 straight games without an error. It's pretty good. Marzilli waiting on the 2-0 pitch. Takes a strike. So TCU stretching their lead out to 7-1 to one here. Those runs charge to Travis Duke, who's... The book is now closed on him. Two-thirds of an inning, two hits, two runs. <laughs> Barzilli lays off a curveball and finds himself ahead in the count. Three balls and a strike. And a lot like yesterday's second game, you look at the scoreboard and it's, you know, both, both clubs have seven hits and both have committed two errors, but then you look at the runs, TCU has seven to Texas is one. You know, it's been the story of the weekend. TCU has taken advantage of Longhorn mistakes and made them pay for it. Barzilli. Waiting on the 3-1 offering. Got a fastball, popped it in the air, right field. Shaw camps underneath, makes the catch. Nolan Brown holds at second base. There are two outs. And just like yesterday, TCU takes advantage of a big error yep. in the ball game. And Eric Crane will be the batter now for the Horn Frogs. Yesterday was the seventh inning. When Hinojosa had the ball go right between his legs, that led to the big inning for the Horn Frogs. And here, TCU, although not necessarily a big inning, they do pick up two big insurance runs on the throwing error by Marlowe. Yeah, no doubt. The first pitch to Crane fouled off left side out of play. This one will be back by the Player Development Center. Green is hitless this afternoon. McGuire, the fourth pitcher used by Texas. Chad Hollingsworth started. Mays followed. Then Duke, now McGuire. Good hard breaking ball. And Crane's behind in the count now. No balls and two strikes. With the 0 for 3 today, Crane's hitting 237. Right now he's trying to get Nolan Brown home from second base. Lined foul. Down to the uh, corner. And the Texas equipment guys will pick up the loose ball. Green behind in the count, 0 and 2. The lights have been on for the last inning as it has darkened up considerably here. Hopefully, the rain will stay away just long enough for us to finish this one. We've had one lightning delay today. 
lasted about 25 or 30 minutes. It looks like there's a pretty big storm southwest of Fort Worth right now. The path of it looks like it's going to move maybe more in like the Burleson area. They don't say that. I have to go home. That's where I live. It's not going towards Burleson. <laughs> Fouls it off. There's some uh, sketchy looking clouds right above us here. Kind of yeah. like uh, boiling water almost. Yeah, it looks like a painting. Those are those are pretty impressive. Definitely has gotten darker for sure. Then you get a good look at those clouds. I mean, sitting there whenever we came back from the lightning delay, there were no clouds and the sun was shining bright. And everybody's wondering how are we in the delay here with uh, the sun out. Yeah. Green able to spoil another pitch from McGuire. Fan in the upper deck makes a good grab. And McGuire trying to get out of the inning here. Giving up just the two runs. Although they're charged to Travis Duke. Takes a breaking ball and it evens the count up at two and two. So yeah. Good at bat by Crane here with Nolan Brown out at second. Yeah, you love to see that from your one of your seniors, not giving in, not chasing pitches, fouling off tough ones, working a really good at bat here late in the game. And you can Bill Moziello's coaching philosophy here. They are not giving up any at bats, even with the six-run lead here. Crane fouling it off. Oftentimes, you'll see teams get out to a pretty sizable lead, and they'll give up in the bat. They'll figure, ah, there's a runner out at scoring position, but it doesn't really matter. We have a sizable lead, and then you end up losing by a run. Yeah. Bill Mosiello, yeah. as you see him walking around there, coaches the hitters. And one thing he harps on is don't give up in the bat, no matter when it is. First inning, ninth inning, it doesn't matter. Count is full to Crane. And McGuire having a little bit of a tough time locating his off-speed pitches, so you would think that he'd probably come with a fastball here. And Schlossnagel has to be pleased with the effort of his hitters today as this is going to be the 10th pitch of the bat for Crane. Three call. Crane thought it was ball four. He was headed down to first base. Instead, he'll turn around and go back to the Hornfrog dugout. But TCU adds a couple of runs. They pick up two runs.